Anyway, by this point in time, biters are literally everywhere, running from left to right, north to south, south to north, crisscross. Will we be able to hold on until we've reached all four of our goals? We haven't even had the time yet to talk about the last two goals in this absolute mayhem. Anyway, goal 3 is researching the flamethrower attack, which still feels miles away in technology. The biters running around everywhere is again putting a severe strain on my ammo usage. The turrets are our last line of defense, and slowly but surely more and more of them are left empty. Why did I start this playthrough? Perhaps, Michael son, the ultimate challenge is the one you cannot defeat. Perhaps, Michael son, the ultimate challenge is the one you cannot defeat. Perhaps, Michael Yeah, 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 perhaps, Michael son, let's get on with it, shall we? The good news is we are doing decently well on our first two goals, which are to collect a lot of steel and a lot of stone walls. The bad news is the biter pressure is getting insane and we still have a long way to go. Many of the biters looking to join an attack group are still parting through my base in a never ending stream. So we need to spend most of our total iron production on hundreds of extra ammo to try and keep the biters under control. I even take all my personal ammo out of my gun and we all know how well that went on Biter Island. But we can't allow the biters to fully stall our progress. The biter revolution factor is inevitably creeping up on 20%, which is the single biggest cause of failed death world runs. Medium biters showing up before you are ready. A secret nightly attack occurs on the copper mine, and again we can see most biters trying to fit through the narrow gaps in my pipe wall, instead of, well, biting on stuff, I guess. Instead of destroyed miners and resource filled furnaces, they only managed to take out the radar and a few pipes. Easy fix. So, regarding the impending doom that approaches with the soon to appear medium biters, our third goal is researching the flamethrower technology, which requires researching through quite a few red green techs. Now, compared to the earlier techs, they require a lot of science packs per technology and the research speed per science pack is much slower. So even if we manage to keep the labs supplied, it will still take quite some time before all of the research projects are done. Meanwhile, we keep going out often to weaken large biter attack groups before they slam into the base, but leaving the base is not without risk. While you're out on one side, another biter group may meanwhile attack from the other side, as you can see happening right now on the minimap. Oh god, why is Factorio guy so slow? Now, the turrets are great for small attacks and picking off biters who survived my poorly aimed grenades, but they do need the preemptive grenade strike support. They simply don't do enough DPS to take out massive biter groups by themselves. Now, because I'm editing down hours of footage to minutes of video, it may be quite hard for you to get an impression of the actual gameplay. So, here's a full unedited section of sped up gameplay, where I alter between doodling around the base, throwing around grenades to weaken future biter attacks, as well as popping a few of them here and there on my own base to deal with attacks and to produce that damaged, rustic look on my machinery. Design master Little Johnny would approve. And here's why it's so important to go out and grenade the biter attack groups to reduce their size. Three attacks at the same time, though all of them are small thanks to our grenade interventions. Now, if you imagine each group to be a couple hundred biters larger, you can see why it's so essential that we unlock those grenades before attempting to actually build and defend the base. We are actually progressing through science at a decent pace. We are only one tag away from flamethrowers now. The flamethrower tag itself though additionally requires 50 military science, for which we need red ammo, grenade- Hey! Stop that right now! Can't you see I'm trying to work here? Jeez!
sorry about that. Kind of rude to interrupt like that, don't you think? Uh, anyway, I was saying we need to sacrifice 25 grenades, 25 red ammo and 50 walls to create the military science packs we need. Meanwhile, we keep an eye on our other goals of stone walls, explosions and steel. And BAM! The flammable stack is finished. Only one tech remaining now. Man, I can smell the napalm victory already. Hey dude! No! What are you doing? N don't research that! Flamethrowers! Yeah! Flamethrowers dude! Oh my god, you're so close and now you're gonna frick it up like that? Yeah, I get it. Not all military science packs are ready, but that is a slow tech dude. And it's not all that useful. What is useful though are all the stone walls and steel, which we will need for the next step of our Grand Master Plan. If we ever get that far, that is when you start researching useless garbage like that. Anyway, meanwhile, three large biter attack groups have amassed in different locations around the base again. But this time we catch a lucky break. The North Biter group decides to attack just as we walk under there. So we can just let them surround us while taking some good old grenades to the face. We escape through the passage in our base, and then we even intercept the South group as they attack. Convenient. Even though we use grenades in the recommended safest way by science, throwing them down cliffs, we still end up almost dead from this encounter. So we have to escape back to the base and cower under the blanket of turret fire. I said cower under the blanket of turret fire, what you don't understand. You're almost dead dude, you can't eat fish to wheel, remember? Up a little more, that's better. So yeah, here's my point. All military science has finished producing and you're stuck only one third in researching this useless tech. It's not too late to realize your mistake and switch techs now. No? Not? Okay then, suit yourself. Anyway, we do have a little extra time because we still haven't started the fourth goal yet. Engines. The problem with engines is that they cannot be crafted by hand. You need to do it in an assembly machine. So we need to do it now while we still have a base. They also pay. What's that there? Nothing? Okay. Where was I? They also take a long time to assemble. This assembly machine would take over 15 minutes to finish a full stack of... <sighs> it's getting pretty hard to get a point across with all these interruptions. Anyway, we may not have 15 minutes to live anymore. So the moral of the story is we divide the resources over 8 assemblers instead of 4. That's all I wanted to say. Meanwhile, the entire base gets taken down single-handedly again by one smart biter. Yes, I have read your comments about armored and rampant biters, and while this is an unmodded playthrough, I promise I will try to repeat this map with both those mods if we manage to beat this playthrough. So basically all of our goals are being worked on. Now we just need to hold on and wait for those processes to finish, including that stupid useless tech you're researching right now. Finally, that unneeded shooting speed tech finishes and we can start on the flamethrower tech. We collect all science packs and use some smart half stacking to equally distribute all science over the 8 laps to ensure research speed stays maximized until the end. But can we still safely leave the base undefended to go take out some biters? There are again 3 big attack groups building up on 3 different sites. What was this episode called again? It somehow seems important. It's finally nice and quiet again.
Well, this episode is called The End. So let's no longer keep you in tension. Yes, it's going to happen. This will be the end of Factorio Guy. Space. He's not gonna try to maintain this base any longer. It's time to end the existence of our base once again. So we start by deconstructing the core of our production. The miners go first. As the flamethrower tech completes, we have succeeded in our first three goals, but we cannot relax just yet. After deconstructing most of the base, pollution output stops, but local pollution is so high, vast amounts continue to spread out to the biter nests for a while, so the attacks won't slow down just yet. After the copper and stone mine, the lab area is next. They have finished their job. We should not be congratulating ourselves just yet though, or we'll end up in one of those celebrating too early compilations. We need to keep our routine of grenading biter attack groups ongoing, or we could still fail this phase of the game. In the early game, there is no such thing as having too much iron, especially in a hostile game like this one. So we kept the iron mines going as long as possible, but alas, ultimately they have to go as well. Meanwhile, also our fourth goal of 4 stacks of engines is finished, which means they won't be the limiting factor in how many flamethrower turrets we can make. Ultimately, that will be the amount of steel we will have left over after making the required elements for the next phase of our game. Ideally, I would like to pack my bags and run away again, but we have way much stuff to carry this time, and there's nowhere nearby to run to. So instead we will have to keep defending this center spot right here from the remaining biter attacks and bring all our stuff here. Now let's go out and collect all our booty and see what we have to work with to somehow continue this playthrough. Let's take a look at the pollution graph. We stopped the miners like 5 minutes ago and the biter nests already have stopped absorbing pollution completely. In a normal game that takes about half an hour or more. The biter nests are absolute pollution vacuum cleaners, sucking in all pollution spread to them almost instantly and converting it into attacks. On the other hand, the rain is a slow but steady pollution absorber, allowing pollution to keep spreading back and forth for a while. The difference here is, we don't really have any terrain for pollution to linger around. Biter nests are literally even touching our base's game chunks, and the spreading out of pollution has already stopped completely. So here we are, after almost 3 hours of game time and evolution entering the medium biter era. Our base is… well, we have no base. We have a couple of chests defended by crappy yellow ammo gun turrets and a whole bunch of pipes littered around on the ground. But hey. It's not the looks of the chest that counts, it is what is inside. But then again, will our game plan be good enough? Will we be able to convert these chests of stuff into a functional base while starting from what is practically nothing, while being literally surrounded by giant biter nests, which are now even protected by medium biters, and did I mention they will soon be joined by the ranged spitter enemies, who can destroy you and your stuff from a distance with deadly armor penetrating acid? But even before that, flamethrowers are nice and such, but they require oil to work, and we have no access to oil as of yet. The nearest oil is down southwest, and it has a not insignificant biter nest right on top of it. You may have noticed we haven't even attempted yet to destroy even just one enemy base. That is because destroying enemy nests significantly bumps up the evolution factor. That evolution increase is of course balanced around normal sized nests and much more spaced out ones as well. This means that any nest we destroy will push up the evolution factor even further. But to claim the oil we must do just that. 
hand evolution is already past the point where medium biters start to appear. And at 25% they will be joined by the small spitters. So will we be able to claim the oil and if we do, will we be able to build a real base? Is there even enough space to attempt that? Well, those are the 99 problems we need to deal with next time. But hey, we may have 99 problems, but the bitch